Right. Should give a few minutes for people to join up here. Alrighty. Well, thank you for anyone that is here. Um, I just want to say, you know, I want to ask a quick question to kind of see where we're, where we're all tuning in from. Where is everyone from? Um, I'm curious to see who we kind of have listening in the audience. Let's see if I can pull this over here. Oh, there we go. There's a the chat. Okay. Pretty wide range. I'll take it. I'll take it. Florida native. I'll take it. Cool. It's cool to see we have a little bit of variety in here. Um, I'm interested to see who else joins. Let me ask that question again when we get a few more people in here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Most of you are in the U.S., I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, first off, um, welcome to your LinkedIn boot camp. If you've been on LinkedIn for any amount of time, you know that social selling on any platform, it's, it's tough to master. I mean, even for the most experienced salespeople, um, 
but I'm the results you do get if you get these things right, they, they won't be matched anywhere else. That's why we put together this boot camp. Um, it's designed specifically for B2B salespeople. Um, in this roughly hour long course, you'll learn the basics of what uh, you'll need to know about selling on LinkedIn. Uh, think of it as your LinkedIn 101 um, from how to create an effective profile, the, how to use LinkedIn search tools um, to find the potential customers, your leads, your personas. Um, in the future, I will be putting together a series of 201 trainings on how to use specific features. Um, but, you know, for now, I'll be covering a lot more topics uh, in short, uh, in a shorter amount of time, more of an overview. Um, so if you're ready to take your sales results to the next level, uh, I'll give you the DL. So also I will be answering questions along the way, um, at the end of the session as well. I'll probably stop maybe one or two times to try to uh, just get some questions out, kind of feel ha, if you have any questions, um, see if anyone's kind of, you know, wants me to go back over something again, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, if you have any questions on certain slides or topics, just put it in the chat right away. I'll answer them along the way. Um, I will definitely be able to get to them. All right. So to maximize your chances of success with social selling um, and direct selling on LinkedIn, there are a few key things that we'll be covering in today's session. Um, why LinkedIn? Social selling on LinkedIn. How can social selling be used on LinkedIn? Winning profile tips, things to keep in mind, how to prospect and sell on LinkedIn, and resources to consider. Now, LinkedIn is no longer your online resume. It is your digital reputation, as Jill Raleigh says here. So in today's digital age, your online presence is way more important than ever. Um, potential employers or prospects um, will often do a quick just Google search of your name before any kind of consideration, whether it is connecting with you, talking with you, you know, whatever it may be. Um, your social media accounts will provide them with valuable insights into your personality and your character, who you're about what you do on the weekends. Those, those kinds of things matter. Um, LinkedIn is one, one of the most important social selling platforms for professionals. And it's important to make sure that your profile accurately reflects who you are and what you're looking for. The days when you could just like post your previous job titles and education are they're, they're gone. Um, now it's more that LinkedIn is all about building relationships and networking. Uh, by adding like interesting articles, joining relevant groups, not just joining old groups, making sure they're relevant to who you want to talk to um, and engaging in the discussions, you can show potential prospects that you're someone who is worth doing business with. Um, in short, it's no longer just an online resume. It's, it is your digital reputation, just like Jill said here. Now, LinkedIn is one of the lower one. I'm sorry, <laughs> LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network with over 640 million users um, in more than 200 countries and regions. It's a powerful platform for building relationships, finding jobs, driving sales. I mean, these are all very important things for all of us here for listening to this. Um, so here are some stat statistics um, that highlight the potential of the B2B sales professional realm. 48.5% of users in the U.S. use LinkedIn at least once a month. 93% of B2B content marketers use LinkedIn for organic social marketing. Organic social marketing is the most important and the most powerful that you'll ever see. Um, I mean, it, it will do everything you need it to do without you having to do half the work for it. So it's really important to, to learn how to use organic uh, social marketing to your advantage and how to leverage it. Uh, marketers see up to two times conversion rates on LinkedIn. True. I mean, go look at it for yourself. You're just going to see more conversion rates. More people are interested in hearing more, learning more, understanding more. Um, four out of five people on LinkedIn will drive business decisions. You can talk to anyone in the C-suite if you disagree with me. I mean, it's it, it will happen. 40% um, of B2B marketers surveyed indicated LinkedIn is the most effective channel for driving high quality leads and Last but not least, companies that post weekly on LinkedIn see a two times higher engagement rate. Now, you're going to see a higher engagement rate if you post consistently on any platform, but specifically, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn today. All right, B2B selling on LinkedIn. Now, it's a very powerful way to connect with potential customers, grow your business, all these sorts of things. But LinkedIn's also a professional network site with over 
560 million members worldwide, making it a prime, the, the prime platform for B2B selling. And when it's done right, B2B selling on LinkedIn will be effective and it'll be a really good way to reach your targets and close these deals in a really simple way. So you can reach the large and targeted audience. You can build this trust and credibility and you can generate leads. So if you're looking for an effective way to reach out to your target market and grow your business, B2B selling on LinkedIn is definitely worth considering. Um, now social selling is, is going to go hand in hand with this. So it's a practice of using social media to build the relationships and close sales. And in a world where nearly everyone is online, I mean, I don't know anyone that doesn't have a cell phone or has been online in some capacity. <laughs> um, social selling provides a very effective, um, and efficient way to reach out to these potential customers. Now, LinkedIn is the perfect platform for this social selling, uh, thanks to its large user base of these professionals, LinkedIn then allows you to connect with potential customers, potential clients. Like you can share your expertise. You can build this trust and credibility around your name. And when it's done correctly, social selling is a very powerful tool for closing deals and growing your business. I mean, they, everyone has this information at the tips of their fingers. They can go look you up and see all the stuff about you and you can make them see exactly what you want them to see about yourself. Now, how can social selling be used on LinkedIn, you may be asking? Well, by building these relationships and engaging with these potential customers on the on LinkedIn, sales professionals, you guys, can now generate leads and drive sales. Now, simply having a presence on LinkedIn, is it's, it's not enough to succeed at social selling. To be effective at it, you guys need to make sure that you're using strategies that are specifically designed for this platform. For example... You need to focus on creating high quality content that's tailored to your target audience. You should also be making sure you're participating with these relevant LinkedIn groups. Like I said earlier, you can't just find some old one, even if it fits really well for you, you got to fit ones that are active. Um, you need to actively connect with other users daily. This needs to be a daily occurrence. If it's not, you're, you're doing it wrong. Um, by using these kind of ideas and some other strategies that we'll get into later, you guys will then be able to maximize your chances of success with this social site on LinkedIn. Now, just doing one of these things will never work. You do have to do these things in tandem. It's just like riding a bike. If you only have one foot, you're not going to get very far. And it's going to be a lot of effort, right? You need two feet to be able to pedal the bike way faster. So for building a professional brand. Now, professional networking sites often do provide an excellent opportunity to build out your brand and expand your network. But LinkedIn is very special by you can create your own profile that highlights your skills and experience. You can attract the attention of these potential employers or clients and even business partners. LinkedIn even offers a number of features that can help you like further promote your brand. Um, like you can join these groups. You can participate in discussions and post articles on your profile. By taking advantage of the simple practices, you can even position yourself as an expert in your field and build that strong professional brand. Now, if people can take you seriously and they think, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. I've seen him in this group. He's been talking about it. He's been able to hold a conversation. I'm able to see on his profile that he's doing X, Y, and Z. It looks really good from what I'm seeing. That's going to take a lot. It's going to take you a lot further in these deals than just simply talking to them via email, right? So again, in today's competitive marketplace, it is way more important than ever to stand out from the crowd. One way to do it is to develop this personal brand. Um, and a personal brand, for those of you who don't know, is it's it's a sum of who you are as a professional, your values, your judgments, your experiences, your expertise. Um, and you even want to throw some of your personality in there because if you don't have personality in there, it, it just looks like a robot. And no one wants to talk to a robot. Uh, they they want to talk to a person. People want to talk to people. They don't want to talk to a screen. They don't want to talk to the chat bot. They want to talk to a person. Um, when you're known for your integrity, your insight, sense of humor. I mean, these things are very distinct in who you are. I'm sure that one of those applied. It, it will always apply. So it's pretty easy to build trust and attract these potential customers when you allow these things to pop out. Um, also a strong personal brand. It can also just help you advance your own career and reach your personal goals. So if you're looking to take your career to that next level and you're, you're like, okay, yes, I'm ready to take that next step, then start by developing a personal brand. Um, more importantly than that, just be authentic to who you are. Make sure that when you are developing this brand, 
it talks exactly to what you want your brand to be, what you want your persona to be, how you want to be perceived by people. All these things matter. So make sure you're paying attention to it when you're building this personal brand. Now, one of the most common mistakes is using the site as a platform to boast about your sales skills. You may be the best salesman in the world. No one cares. Just going to be frank. Your LinkedIn profile, it's its just not the place to brag about your deals that you've closed, how much money you've made for the company. Instead, you should use it as a way to connect with other professionals, share some valuable information, teach them a little bit. If you fill your profile with this self-promotional content, you're likely to turn off potential connections. Instead, I'd say you should focus on providing value by sharing your expertise and insights. Now, by taking this approach, you'll more than likely attract the attention of these potential employers and clients. And that's what LinkedIn's really for. I was reading a study and it was saying that for every one, it's, it's called a four to one rule. For every one self-promotional piece of content you put out, you need to put out four other posts. I say four, I, the rule's three. But you need to put out four other posts that are not self-promoting. That you're reposting something, you're making conversation with someone. Like You need to make sure that people are seeing you're not just all self-promotion. You need to be interacting with other people. No one wants to be talking about you all the time. You have to learn to talk about other people sometimes. Now, LinkedIn headlines. Your LinkedIn headline is one of the first things that people will see when they visit your profile. So in just those few little words, you have a potential to make that strong first impression and encourage people to learn more about you. But you may be asking, what makes a great LinkedIn headline? All right, so there's no perfect formula. I can't give you this perfect formula. It's going to work every time. But there's a few elements that can kind of help you ensure that your headline makes a positive impact. So firstly, focus on making it clear and concise. Avoid using slang, jargon, or buzzwords. Um, stick to language that can be easily understood by your target audience. For your benefit, I would say keep it to a sixth grade reading level. Um, I think a study was done saying that majority of consumers um, want to read at a fifth grade reading level. They don't want to read above that. So anywhere around there, if a fifth if a fifth grader can understand it, you're good. Um, and for your benefit, I've put together this little simple formula that can like you can use over and over again for good results. Um, but again, there's no perfect formula. You're gonna have to critique it to who you are and what your brand will be. So here are some good examples. So again, really simple. Your title. Years of experience serving in this particular like industry or vertical, and then your unique strength or value prop. Closing sales manager with 10 years of experience in SaaS, increased upsell revenue by 67%. Senior account executive with five years of experience in retail, proven ability to increase customer loyalty. Telecom sales consultant with 15 years of experience known for developing new markets. Super simple. Now, secondly, Make sure that your headline is accurate. Make sure it reflects what you do and who you are. Be genuine, be authentic, and really resist this temptation to exaggerate or make these false, huge claims, these sweeping claims. Um, lastly, keep it up to date. Regularly revise it um, to ensure that it's relevant and accurate to who you are today. You know, who you are today is different than who you are four years ago. It's, it's a fact. Um, I would say adding personality is something that you also need to do here. So here are some other good examples of where people threw in um, a little bit of their personality. A witty wordsmith who loves helping tech startups. Ghostwriter and content strategist. Avid traveler and coffee lover. Business development at a tech startup. Graphic design maven with a passion for fashion. I personally like the third one the most. Passion for fashion sounds hilarious to me, but obviously I'm not a fashion person, as you guys can see today. I'm I'm not the one who knows fashion, but passion, a passion for fashion is pretty funny to me. It's a play on words. I like that kind of stuff. Some other examples. Um, and now remember, just being clear and concise. Use this simple language that can be easily understood, fifth grade reading level, super simple. By following this formula, you can write a headline that will create uh, this standout from other people, from your competition, and it'll attract the right attention. Again, loud introvert with the big mission. How is that possible, right? It just makes you look at it. Brand strategist, energetic speaker, foodie, and proud dad. I am not a foodie personally, but obviously Philip Oakley is. So doing these simple things that kind of make you stand out, 
I would say throw an emoji or two in there as well. Make yourself stand out. Um, before I move on to the next section, I'm going to give you about 60 seconds here. Um, and if there's any questions, just throw them in the chat and I'll answer them. Okay. All right. I saw one good question. All right. So you asked me why, why emojis? Um, I think that emojis are good. So you need to think about white space. So for example, this slide right here that you're looking at, it's going to grab your attention a good bit, right? I mean, like you, you got to kind of look at this. Now, if I go back a slide, where are your eyes going? They're going towards the white. So in the same way I would use these emojis in your headline, I would make sure that they stand out, that they make sense and they fit in the sentence. Um, you know, when you see LinkedIn posts, you see emojis in there all the time. Why is that? They grab your attention. There was text in there that didn't really grab your attention though. Every LinkedIn post has text. Every headline has text. An emoji can make you stand out. Now make sure it's relevant. Make sure it fits to that headline. But I would also say that it's really good for showing people that you know what you're talking about and you care enough to go that extra step. If you are unfamiliar with how to use emojis, just look up laughing emoji. You can copy it off the website, paste it into the headline. It'll work just fine. Now, I would say when you're creating these things, if you just want to put a coffee emoji in there because you like coffee, not a bad thing. If you're talking about being a coffee addict, like you love coffee, you want to throw a coffee emoji in there, by all means, it looks great. Anything you can do to kind of grab people's attention, show them you care enough. You didn't just sit there when you first made your profile and you wrote it out. You put emoji in there. You you tried your best to make sure you stood out. I would say those are the small things. Um, pay attention to those small details that matter when it goes into creating this profile, this persona. Um, all right, moving on. About me section. So now it's time to put your best foot forward. This is where you're going to make that first impression. So your LinkedIn profile is your digital resume. Um, it's one of the first places um, that prospects are going to lurk, uh, going to look to learn more about you. It's so it's important to make that great first impression. First impressions mean everything. You will forever remember the first impression you have with someone. Um, it's scientifically proven that as soon as you have that first impression of someone, that'll be how you view them for the rest of your life. There's no, there's no way to change it. You will always remember that. That's always your first impression. That's why it's called a first impression. That's the first impression you made on them. Now, one way to do this is by crafting a super engaging in a keyword rich summary. So in the about me section of your profile, start by introducing yourself, briefly mentioning your current offering, most recent experience and results. Then you can highlight some of your strengths, your accomplishments, some of the key ones in the big parts of your life. Um, be sure to use like specific examples and a little bit of persuasive language to say yourself as the best partner for your ideal client. Um, also always end it with a call to action. If you're inviting them, uh, whoever's reading it to connect with you, learn more about you. Um, maybe it's just your calendar link. Maybe it's a phone number. Any of these things are going to be uh, good at making that person take the time um, to reach out to you. Uh, if they see it, they're interested, they're going to reach out to you. It's right there. Oh, calendar link's right here. Let me just copy and paste it. Their phone number, their email. I can reach out to them. When it's right there, if they're reading that, it's a lot easier for them to want to reach out to you, right? Other than having to look for it or even ask you for it. Um, so by taking the time to create this kind of standout summary, um, you'll just be a little bit closer to landing in that target audience. Um, so your about me section is one of the most important parts of your profile. So you want to make sure that it connects to your personal brand. Um, so you want to make sure you're telling this compelling story. 
Sorry, I see that I see your comments. Yes, I will answer those questions in a minute. All right. Yeah, yeah, I see you guys. Good questions in there. I like that. Um, sorry, there are several key elements to consider when crafting this first part of your this this bio section or the about me section. So give an overview of yourself, why you do what you do, and you can include information on your current job um, and profession and any hobbies or interests that make up who you are. Um, also share stories from your past that have influenced where you are today. For example, if a particular experience pushed you towards entering a certain field or starting a certain business venture, um, I would share those. Secondly, provide some detail about what makes you unique. This is a big opportunity to demonstrate some of your skills and experiences um, and even some of your accomplishments, but make sure it's in a relatable manner. If you don't do that, people are not going to be able to relate to you. If they can't relate to you, why do they want to talk to you? Why, why would they waste their time? You don't understand what they're going through. So make sure it's in a relatable manner. Be a very soft uh, approach when you're doing it, but also make sure that you are still sharing these things. Because if you don't, you, how are they going to know you're credible or not? So also describe what makes you stand out from other professionals in your field or industry and why people should work with you rather than someone else. Uh, also, don't forget to include a call to action. So like I was saying earlier, calendar link, phone number, email, all super easy. If you go to my bio, I have them all three listed. So whether it is just encouraging the employers to contact you for the job opportunities or it's fostering relationships with those ideal clients or personas. Always make sure you provide an easy way for other people to connect with you. When you do that, they're way more likely to take that next step. It's so easy for them. They just copy and paste the phone number, the email, the the whatever it is, the, the calendar invite link, like whatever it is, it's super easy for them to do. Um, so just make sure you're doing that. But also, your About Me section is the perfect place on LinkedIn for you to show off uh, who you are as a person and a professional. So make sure it reflects the best version of yourself. Now, with all these tips, you can craft the engaging About Me section that tells your story to help you keep making these connections. And as you cultivate more and more connections, it's just going to build on itself over time. Now, profile picture. This is arguably one of your most important things you need to pay attention to. So use a professional headshot. No selfies, no vacation photos, please. So show off your best side, put a big genuine smile on, make direct eye contact with the camera. Um, it's also super important uh, to dress business casual. Nothing that's overly fancy, but still is appropriate for a workplace. Um, remember to pick a neutral background that won't draw like this unnecessary attention away from you. Um, and also make sure if you need to edit it a little bit, all of these phones have editing capabilities. You can edit these pictures to make them look good. So make sure it's edited. Make sure it's just simple, cropped correctly. No pixelated images. If you have one that looks super pixelated, people may think you are stole the picture from someone else and you're using it. Make sure it's a clear photo. You have the time. You have the capabilities to do this. Um, now, following these like really simple tips will help you ensure to maintain a professional presence on LinkedIn and create this engaging profile. So like I said, super easy, quick, use professional headshot, smile, make eye contact, dress in business casual, neutral background, just make sure it's not pixelated. Just edit the photo a little bit. I am sure that you can just hit auto on iPhones at least. I know that you can do it for iPhones and it will edit it to make sure it's clear. It's super simple to do. All right. Now, the good, the bad. The ugly. I hate to say it, it's true. Okay. So let's start by looking at some of the like more common mistakes that I see people using with their profile pictures. So, like I said, don't settle for a selfie. A good LinkedIn profile picture will look like a professional and Paul's picture. So, when you take the time to pose for this nice photo in front of that neutral background that won't distract from your face, that's the first step. Good job. Um, the next thing to avoid is using any type of like filter, like Snapchat filters, Instagram filters, just don't use them. While they may make your profile stand out, uh, it's it's not a good standout. It's only going to hurt your credibility in the long run. It's only going to hurt your credibility, I'm sorry, in the long run. Um, as these kind of things make you seem like way less professional. Like people people are not going to trust you if you have dog ears and eyes on. Um <laughs> Um, also try not to take your profile photo in an outfit that might not be considered business professional or business casual. So you want to be taken seriously. 
So make sure you look the part. You have to dress the part, right? And so people say when you go to your, your first job interview, dress the part to make that role. Um, so here are a few examples, good, bad, and ugly, what not to do when it comes to taking your LinkedIn profile picture. So all the way on the right, we have the overly casual look. This is where someone forgets that they are like going to, that everyone's going to see this picture and it's not Facebook. Um, in the middle, we have the crop out. Now, a professional picture shouldn't be a crop out of some other picture that you took and cropped out the surroundings. Um, we also have the totally unprepared look. It includes wearing bright colors such as neon, yellow, hot pink. I mean, sometimes hot pink's okay, but it's it very, very few situations we're going to see that work. Um, or just having a messy room or a clutter background. That's not my photo, so it's okay. Um, Finally, there is the, I'm too cool for this look. So this is when someone takes a photo of themselves with like sunglasses. They got a little smirk going on. Um, it can be kind of off-putting to these potential prospects or employers. And it won't make you stand out in the best way. It'll make you stand out, but not in a good way. Again, we want to make sure we're professional. And when we're doing these things, we're also making ourselves stand out um, in good ways. Um, now, remember... Taking this LinkedIn profile uh, picture is serious. You want to take it seriously. So put some thought into it. You know, Take care to ensure that your image looks professional, polished, appropriate. Um, I will caveat this with the fact of if your brand is meant to be playful or target the cat lovers, then you may have some leeway to bring your cat into the frame. But otherwise, think about your audience. Like You don't you don't want your cat in the photo, I would say, in 99% of what you're doing on LinkedIn. It, it doesn't fit your persona. It doesn't fit your brand. It's not going to make you stand out to that person in the right way. Um, so the featured section, this is probably one of the more powerful parts of LinkedIn that I don't see many people using. So I don't know if you've ever been scrolling through and wonder what the feature section is on LinkedIn. So I'm just going to give you a couple reasons why this is super beneficial, specifically super beneficial for social selling. Reason one, this feature uh, this featured section allows you to highlight the content that is specific to your industry or field of expertise. Um, it makes it easier for these potential employers and clients to find relevant information about what you do and how you can help them. Reason two is you can showcase your best work in the featured section, which helps you visually demonstrate your skills and capabilities. Um, this will kind of help people give an idea of what they can expect from working with you. Um, and most people don't use a featured section. If you do, I promise you, your profile is going to stand out more than other people's. Um, this will even give you this little bit of competitive edge on helping the, uh, attract more business opportunities. Um, just showing people, again, that you care about your LinkedIn profile, you care about your presence. Now, LinkedIn recommendations. So one of the more important things you can do is request recommendations from your contacts and from your current clients. So these recommendations should speak to your skills, experiences, and results in order to give those potential employers or customers a better idea of who you are as a professional. So don't be afraid to ask your contacts and clients for recommendations. Make sure to include them in your profile. Um, when someone sends you a recommendation, you just have to click on include and it'll pop up in there uh, in, on your profile. So this will also help you stand out from other candidates uh, and show that you're serious about your professional career and that you do want to stand out and make sure that um, you're trusted and that people can see you as a thought leader there. So choose people who can speak to your specific skills and experience. If you're working with people and they can kind of talk to you being a professional and organizing teams, maybe you're a sales consultant, uh, talk to people who have had experience with you selling. If you're a recruiter, have someone who you landed a job for give you a recommendation, like things like that will go towards people taking you seriously. All right. How to prospect on LinkedIn. So one of the most effective ways to prospect for potential customers is through LinkedIn. But you may be asking, okay, how you keep saying that, how do I do it? So um, once you've identified um, how to build your comprehensive profile that is accurate to who you are and your professional brand, you can now use this profile um, to reach out to these people. Uh, it's, it works wonders. As soon as you get it curated exactly how you want it to, 
it it works wonders. So you can now use the search functionality to find potential customers who match your ideal target market or the persona that you created. So once you identify these prospects, it's important to start engaging with them by sending personalized messages, um, interacting with their posts, anything like that. Uh, this helps to start a conversation, build rapport with the prospect. You can even engage with them further by like liking and commenting on their posts, like I said. So as well as sharing this content that you may find interesting or informative for them, if something pops up, share it with them. It's super easy to do and it'll make you seem like you care. So lastly, it is essential to follow up after your initial conversations with prospects. Um, I would say this is probably one of the bigger parts that people miss out on. Um, and there's a lot of tools that can help you with this. If you never follow up with someone, you're essentially saying, yeah, you're too, you're, you're not cool enough. I'm not going to talk to you. I, I forgot to follow up with you. Like you want to make sure you're reaching out to these people. If you don't reach out to them, you've missed the entire reason as to why you're even talking to them in the first place. So when you start doing it, make sure to continue to build those relationships, establishing your trust. And if you're running into like time constraints, like basically everyone does because you don't have enough time in the day, then there's a multitude of technology solutions that can help you stay on top of creating, posting, outreach, follow-up, video, anything you can think of, there's a tool for it. Um, if you guys need any personal recommendations, just feel free to send me an email. I'm more than happy to send you a list that I've created of the bigger tools I like to use um, that I've been using over the years. All right. Now, let's see. How do you use Sales Navigator? This is my favorite part. Some people don't know about Sales Navigator. So I'm a huge fan of Sales Nav because it provides incredibly useful information for B2B prospecting. It allows you to create this professional, it allows you to create professionals like you. I'm sorry. Um, and it allows you to reach out to them. So I'm, I'm trying to say here, even though I just botched that sentence completely. Um, now, to quickly and easily identify these valuable leads, you need to create campaigns, track customer engagement in real time, analyze performance metrics, and doing that will optimize your outreach efforts. Now, with Sales Navigator, you can utilize powerful features like account targeting, which enables you um, to target these specific accounts or industries. So you can also see that platform even offers uh, insights that provide you valuable data on your prospects and accounts. So giving you this invaluable intelligence into your prospecting, into their interests, their buying habits, all these sorts of things will give you the upper hand when talking to these people. So all these features make it really easy for professionals to reach out to these professional customers, um, or I'm sorry, to these potential customers quickly, effectively, and doing all this while providing actionable insights into these customer behavior is all important. Now, ultimately, this helps ensure the maximum ROI for the marketing activities when it's used strategically. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's essentially, like I said earlier, it's like trying to pedal a, a bike with one foot. It's hard to do. You're never going to do good at it. Um, so if you're looking for a powerful tool to boost your B2B sales, Sales Navigator is an excellent choice. It's, it's very powerful. Now, Sales Nav has three versions. Trace. Sales Navigator Core um, is the basic subscription tier. Um, it provides you access to sales intelligence, um, such as like uh, profiles, lists, and insights, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, it also allows you guys to connect and collaborate with teammates using Team Link. Um, you can create searches and lists. I would say that's probably the most powerful part of this. You can also view Salesforce records in Sales Nav. Um, you can schedule emails with the auto send and you get notifications and uh, news alerts on your leads and uh, this entire list. Um, Sales Navigator Advanced, which is the middle blue option here, number two. Um, it's a more powerful, it has a lot more powerful features that kind of help your teams work more effectively together. Um, it also includes the shared lists. Um, so that way your different teams can collaborate, build contact lists, um, buyer intent alerts for gaining this special insight into a company's interest in your product or solution, uh, smart links. So you guys can, uh, package content into a single link and then track your sales tech stack and CRM integration with Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics 365. Super useful. Now, all the way on the right. In the blue, we have Sales Navigator Advanced Plus. I know it sounds like an iPhone title, 
the 14 Pro Max plus a like it's crazy, but it is it's what they call it. Okay, now this is the highest subscription tier. Um, it's more for supporting this enterprise grade functionality. So it includes all the features of the last two um, of Sales Navigator Advanced, as well as the additional features to integrate with the CR information into Sales Navigator. So it pushes Sales Nav information into your CRM pretty easily. Um, it includes auto saving the relevant leads from your CRM, viewing opportunity information in Sales Nav, creating leads and contacts in your CRM directly from Sales Nav, which is pretty simple. Um, it sounds complicated, but it's pretty straightforward. Data validation to flag this out of day records, ROI reporting to measure your revenue impact, and there's a few more features that are you know more niche. Um, you also can have administrators that will like have access to this to a sandbox environment for testing purposes, which is pretty cool. They allow you to do that. Uh, for the, I would say majority of you, I'd, I would say 95, 99% of you, you don't need anything beyond the core services. Um, they cost $79.99 a month and it has one free trial month for you to test it out. I would recommend testing it out, seeing how it works, uh, for you. Um, and when I make this 201 course, I would recommend watching that because I'm going to dive into a little bit more of how to use sales navigator to the fullest extent, the different functionality pieces you can use. It'll be pretty good in teaching you just how to use it effectively. Um, but I'd also be remiss, remiss if I didn't say that there's also some pretty good videos already out there on YouTube showing you how to use sales navigator and maybe some big, um, potential leads that you can get from it. Boolean searches are pretty good. Anything like that is going to be able to help you just be able to understand what LinkedIn is, how Sales Navigator is going to be able to help you, and those sorts of things. Um, so I know that I did see some questions earlier. I'm going to give you guys about another 30 seconds to ask any more, and I'll point out like two questions and I'll answer those. Let me tell you, if I could get rid of pollen, I would. I don't know. This allergy that I've started up is ridiculous. I I, I just can't with it. It's, it's ridiculous. All right. Which question do I want to reach out to first? Okay. <clears throat> so one of the things that I had seen people um, asking about was profile picture leniency. This is really... It depends on who you're talking to, right? Um, you know, like I was saying, if you want to bring your account into the frame, it's okay. Um, if your brand speaks to cats, if you're a cat food person, if your services are something to do with pets, yeah, okay. If your service has something to do with vacations, you better be on a vacation in that photo. You better have a Hawaiian shirt on with some big flowers have fluffy standing next to you man like you got to have something to make you look like stand out right but if that is not your brand be professional so many people use like crop out photos or photos from other events um and it just it just won't perform the same it's gonna look different it's gonna look spammy it's gonna look fake it's gonna look like people some like someone stole your account and they're they're now using this stolen profile picture to, to pose as you i'd say it's pretty it's i'd say it's fairly common um more now than ever um, for this to happen just because people want to get the upper hand in wherever they're doing. Sometimes they just want to ruin your day. Um, those kinds of spams um, and sc I'm sorry, those kinds of scams are way more prevalent, I would say today. So just making sure you have a good profile picture. If it's pixelated, I, I would recommend never using it um, because if I see a pixelated profile picture, nine times out of 10, I'm not even going to click on that profile to see if they're a real person. Pro pixelated profile pictures usually tell me this is a fake person. 
Um, or if it looks AI generated as well, I'm going to be like, yeah, no, I'm good. It looks fake to me. So business casual, neutral background, easy to see, clear. I mean, your iPhone's probably going to take a pretty good picture. Your Samsung's probably going to take a pretty good picture. If you want to get a real professional camera, you can. Maybe you're cool like that. Maybe you got the money for that. If you do, more power to you. Um, what's the other question I saw? Sales nav. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I so the question is, you know, what do you what would you recommend? Like I said in the last uh, when we were looking at the last slide, I would recommend the $80 one. Um I don't think you're gonna use many of the features. And now obviously I don't know you, I don't know your company, what you do in a data outreach, but I'm gonna go with you're probably gonna fit in that $80 uh slot for sales nav. Premium's okay. Um it's good, but it's not as good as Sales Navigator. Uh, Sales Navigator is just better. Um, animals are pretty useful. Um, I don't use them all that often. I'd be lying if I said I did. Um, I use them, I, I'll maybe send 10 animals a month. Um, I know that they're useful. They're they're a good way to stand out. Um, and you'll even get a credit back. So, I mean, if, if you have premium, I think you get 45 animals a month. When you send that in mail, if they're applied to it, you get the credit back and you can send out another one. So they are nice to have. They're nice to use. Um, but I think a connection request is plenty for you to connect with someone. As long as you're being personal with them, um, I would say that's probably where you're good for. I also know that if you're trying to do social selling, a free account on LinkedIn, uh, you only get 10 connection requests a week that have text included or what LinkedIn calls a note. Um, so I would say that premium would also help you get around that. Um, but sales navigator just comes with some more benefits. I, I think it's worth the extra, what is it? 10 extra dollars, 20 extra dollars. I, I think it's gonna be worth it. Being able to social sell on LinkedIn is very powerful. I think you'll see more than enough ROI. Um, if it's time constraint for you, like I said, reach out, I'll, I'll show you the list of tools that I have that I've been using for the past three years to do this, um, at every job I've held. So, all right. Conducting research. Also, if that did not, if you feel like I did not answer your question enough, feel free to reach out via email. We can set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, or if I didn't get to your question for some reason, because there was a, there was quite a few. If I didn't get to your question, feel free to send me an email. We'll set up a one-on-one. -on -one. We can talk about this. If you're watching this as an old recording, because um, I will have this up on YouTube, the offer still stands. If you have a question, reach out via email. I'll show it here at the end. Um, feel free to ask the steps and not to talk about it. I'm more than happy to give you my advice. Um, all right. So in the B2B realm specifically is what we're talking about today can kind of apply to, to B2C, but more B2B more than anything. Um, conducting research on LinkedIn can be especially valuable, um, by using like a keyword search, um, for groups, um, or keywords or, uh, job titles. Uh, you can target businesses even uh, and businesses in your industry. Um, and you can even learn more about like their challenges, their needs. Also, company pages will help you like understand the size of organizations that you may be targeting. So by reading these these articles um, through Pulse, if you have SalesNav, um, you can stay up to date on the trends uh, in their field or in your field even. Um, lastly, identifying influencers allows you to see what you th what the thought leaders are saying about the topics related to your industry right now. So that'll help you kind of keep a pulse on what's going on. So with all this information at hand, it enables B2B professionals such as yourself to make informed decisions when marketing your products or your services. So with a better understanding of your target markets, wants, and needs, you can then create a more tailored experience and better serve them. Um, ultimately, this research will help you increase in sales um, and even help you just grow your business, it alone, again, will not serve you well unless you have all the components of it, though. So as a quote here by Julio Viscovich himself, social media is not a place for a hard sell. It's a place for, to build trust and credibility. Now, social media is a really powerful tool to connect people, um, build relationships, share information, share personal information. Maybe something happened in your life, you had a kid, change jobs, whatever it may be. 
So it's a great way to get your brand out there and establish yourself as an authority in your chosen field, as a thought leader, as I like to say. So one thing that many people overlook is the importance of establishing, establishing this like trust and credibility on social media. It's not about pushing your products or services in these people's faces. It's about engaging with people in a meaningful way, you know, building relationships that will last. Uh, for, for example, if someone follows you on social media, it's important to take the time to respond to their comments, answer their questions, just have a conversation with them. Um, it, it shows them that you care and you're willing to invest in the relationship. Um, and relationships make deals. People want to have a relationship. They don't want to have a relationship with this robot. Like I was saying earlier, like you have to make them invest in the relationship, but you also have to invest in the relationship. Um, it's also a good idea to share like valuable content uh, that relates to your field, show off the expertise that you have a little bit. You know, doing these things will help cultivate an audience who trusts and even values your opinion, um, which is going to go a lot further when you're using it to using all of it to social sell. So when it comes to selling on LinkedIn, building these relationships is is a big key. I'd say it's the main key. If you don't build relationships, it ain't, ain't going to work. It's called social selling for a reason. Um, the other day I was trying to make a connection, for example, and this potential customer at this point, um, and instead of just sending like this generic message that I send to everyone, I just took a few extra minutes, personalized it. I mentioned that we had some stuff in common, pretty easy. He was a Bucks fan. I mean, I can't pass that up. Sorry guys. Um, and I noticed a recent post that I put out that really kind of resonated with me. Um, and then I asked how his business was doing. It allowed me to kind of start off on the right foot uh, and put a more friendly face to my pitch. Um, I also shared some valuable content related to the industry that he was in. Um, it, it was informative, but it wasn't too salesy because you don't want to come off as salesy. Um, you, you don't, no one wants to be sold to, so you have to be careful to avoid that. Um, this showed him that I valued him as a potential customer. Um, in addition to showing off my knowledge on the subject matter, of course, now, throughout all of this, I made sure to remain like professional, avoid, you know, my advice would be to avoid any language or tone that could be interpreted as aggressive. I think sometimes it's easy to kind of come off as aggressive when you're trying to be kind, but also come off as informative. Um, so by taking the time to build personal relationships, provide informative content, personalized messages, I was able to pull them into a one-on-one -on -one virtual uh, Google Meet and just continue this conversation. Um, it's why it's so important to remember that when you are selling on LinkedIn, relationship building is the end goal. Um, helpfulness should come before trying to push your product or services too hard. Um, the relationships just should come first in every, in every aspect. So if you come across as too salesy, it'll cost you those potential customers. Um, if done right though, I mean, LinkedIn can be a great way to sell your products and services. Social selling is super powerful. People love relationships. They want to have more. So everyone on LinkedIn is looking for something different. So if you want to make the most of your presence on the platform, you need to be clear about what it is that you have to offer. For example, say you're a software consultant. Um, you work with CPA firms. Rather than just posting general updates about your product, your services all the time, because it's boring, no one's going to read it. Think about who your target audience is. Tailor each post to that specific group and their biggest pain points. So if you become a solid like resource for their problems, they'll eventually start to pay attention to whatever you're sharing. They can even begin to engage, reshare, or reach out. I It sounds crazy. It's happened plenty of times. So also, in addition, make sure to include a strong call to action in your posts so that your potential customers can easily take the next step. This can be as simple as providing a link to your website or blog where they can learn more about your services. Um, but also, once you've made a connection with someone on LinkedIn, I would, again, seriously encourage you to take a conversation off the platform. Google Meets are free if you don't have any other software. Zoom, a lot of people like Zoom. Um, having this in-depth conversation about your products or services over video, email, phone, this will help you uh, get that potential customer to get an understanding of what it is you have to offer. So this is often the best way to show off your expertise and help the customers make an informed decision on what they need to do moving forward. Um, social selling on LinkedIn can be a great way to engage with your audience, build these relationships. Uh, again, for example, let's say it's a good example. 
let's say you run an executive coaching firm. Um, you can use LinkedIn polling, which is a super powerful. Um, ask your connections, you know, ask them questions about their career path, what challenges they're maybe facing. Um, ask them common questions they get about their industry. Um, or how they stay motivated. I think it's a pretty easy, very general thing. How do you stay motivated? What do you do every day? Do you have a speech you get up to when you listen? I know some of my buddies, they have a YouTube video. They listen to every morning when they get up. It's their motivation. A little crazy to me. I couldn't do that every morning, but they do it. And you know what? They get up and they're some of the hardest workers I've ever met. So ask them what it is. Share a link to your YouTube video. What song gets you going in the morning? What do you do? What's your morning routine? You know, any of those kind of things. Create engagement. It's going to help you go a lot further. Uh, when you're when you're trying to social sell, so you can also use LinkedIn Live. Uh, you can host these live videos. You can broadcast. Um, this kind of allows you to give advice, answer questions, um, but most importantly, it allows you to interact with your followers in real time. Uh, the live streams are super powerful. Uh, lastly, utilize the listicle posts. You know, break down these complex topics into this easy to read format. Uh, this will engage with your audience a little bit easier. Again, fifth grade reading level, even if all the people you've connected with are, are experts, fifth grade reading level. Um, by kind of sharing these insights, you can even position yourself as a thought leader, um, build trust with your connections in a really good way. Um, this will make them see that you're serious and you know what you're talking about. So with social selling on LinkedIn, you can even create these like meaningful relationships with your followers and drive real business results. I mean, it's super easy to create a poll and just kind of ask people questions, let them engage themselves, and you'll kind of learn over time what what polls engage better than others. Uh, so, uh, you know, to continue this one, an important thing is that when you find what works for your audience um, and helping them to understand the opportunity that exists to improve the results, business, revenue, or just life in general, um, not all your posts will lead to next steps, demos, or even closed deals. Um, but everyone should, you know, you should help your ideal clients improve their lives. That's kind of your end goal. You need to increase their knowledge, their understanding, help them reach their goals. When you help them reach their goals, they're going to end up paying you for it at some point. Right, uh, you you give them advice enough times, they'll be like, okay, I need to pay you. I'm getting this for free. What am I going to get when I pay this guy? So for many of you, you'll be able to take everything I share with you today, implement it, and be consistent. Um, while others of you are going to struggle with technic technical or creative sides of things, either way, we all struggle with having enough time to do it. Um, doing it all is it's hard, right? Right? Like you, it's it's nearly impossible to do that. Um, if you need help reach out. Um, reach out to me here at Growbot so I can lend a helping hand. I have plenty of technology that I can share with you, show you what I've been doing. Um, anything I've shared with you today, I've had a lot of personal experience in doing. Uh, so I'm more than happy to help you where you're on your journey and kind of show you next steps. Um, battling time poverty is a real thing. Um, if you're serious um, about LinkedIn and you're maybe considering outsourcing it, Profile copywriting, content creation, all the bullet points here, graphic design, post management, community engagement, advertising, campaign planning, target outreach, anything. I am more than happy to help. I'm more than happy to show you what I did, how I handled these kind of situations when I got in them. Um, you know, you you find yourself in these moments and you're like, okay, can I outsource this? Is it, you know, I don't have enough time, but I want to do this, right? I want to land more sales. If you don't have sales coming through to your business, you are ultimately failing. You have no money coming in the door. So you want to make sure you're trying social selling. You want to make sure you're using social selling to the best of its ability. If you need help battling time poverty in any way, I have more than enough solutions to provide you with. So please feel free to reach out. So I want to ask everyone today, let's spend an hour with us. How would you grade your current utilization of LinkedIn today? On a scale of one at the red, 10 at the green. I'll take a moment to see where everyone lands. Now, don't be embarrassed. Just be honest. Um, if you ask me how good I was uh, at what, 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 like at rock climbing, for example, like I'd say I'd hover between like the red and the cliff, right? I mean, like super far left. I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> but I like, I, I'm, 
I'm getting better. Okay. Like, I'm trying. I want to improve. Okay. Um, but all jokes aside, it is an important thing that we're honest with ourselves so we can start to build the understanding um, and the abilities daily. So this is also an excellent time for you to ask questions as we wrap this up here. Maybe some things we didn't cover that you were hoping we would. Again, I'm seeing a few questions in here. I'm not going to be able to answer all these today. Um, as we're coming up on the hour here, we're just, we're just over an hour, so I do have to go here. But feel free to send me an email, um, book a time with me. Uh, I have my calendar link in my bio. Um, and I also have it on the top of my uh, profile, book an appointment. If you want to learn more about what needs to happen next, I'm really happy to share with you all the resources that I have available to me. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm helping you as much as I can. Um, yeah, reach out to me if you need any help. Uh, my email is on the screen, michael uh, at growbot.online or michael.reynolds at growbot.online. Either way, you will reach me. Um, I'd be happy to help you in every way I can. I'd, I'd love to just give you advice, even if it doesn't lead to anything for me. I'm more than happy to just share with you uh, kind of what I've learned through my journey uh, and maybe, um, how I'm able to help you today. If that is it, I'll give you a few more seconds to see if any more questions pop up in chat. Uh, let's see. Do I have a comment? Um, so I don't have a Q&A sheet I share with people. I've been asked a lot of questions over the years, but I usually just kind of answer them one-on-one -on -one as they come through. Yep. Yeah, I, I do enjoy social selling. Why social selling? Um, so, I mean, I chose, I chose to do social selling because... Uh, I like relationships. I like understanding people. I like understanding where they come from, their story, their expertise, why they do what they do. Um, so all those things really matter for me. I like to understand who I'm talking to. Um, if you're a sports fan, what's, what sports team do you go for? Why? College, uh, professional level. Maybe you're not into sports. Maybe you're into music. What genre do you like? Why do you like what you like? I want to learn more about you as a person. Then I'll move into your company. You know, why did you get started in consulting? Why did you get started in B2B sales at all? Why are you a BDR today? I like to learn more about people. So social selling really fits who I am um, because I'm just curious and I like to learn more about people. Um, and just learning more about people's businesses is, businesses is pretty fun too. I can't lie. Uh, you get to meet some pretty cool people. Uh, I've had the privilege to meet a lot of people who are very young in their business. Uh, and it's awesome to be able to help them. Yep. Yep. You as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Also, I'm looking at chat over here. Sorry. I know that it's not directly at the camera. Um, it's on my, it's on my second monitor over here. All right, guys, as I wrap this up again, feel free to reach out to my email or phone number on the, on the screen. Um, if there is any more additional questions, just email me. We're than happy to set up a quick 15 minute, 30 minute chat with you and just help you where I can. Other than that, thank you guys for sticking around. Those of you who stuck around for an hour, if you tune in for only a few minutes, that's fine too. If you're watching this back, thank you. I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week.